Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Wednesday, June 9th, and we celebrate the feast day of St. Ephraim, deacon and doctor. But let us begin, as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Pour into our hearts, O Lord, we pray. The Holy Spirit, at whose prompting the deacon St. Ephraim exalted in singing of your mysteries, and from whom we received the strength to serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the Scripture. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, such confidence we have through Christ toward God. Not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us. Rather, our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not of letter but of spirit, for the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry of death carved in letters on stone was so glorious that the children of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of its glory that was going to fade, how much more will the ministry of the spirit be glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation was glorious, the ministry of righteousness will abound much more in glory. Indeed, what was endowed with glory has come to have no glory in this respect because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was going to fade was glorious, how much more will, that, will what endures be glorious? Let me say that again. For what if, for if what was going to fade was glorious, how much more will what endures be glorious? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Holy is the Lord our God. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel, among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them, Holy is the Lord our God. From the pillar of cloud he spoke to them. They heard his decrees and the law he gave them. Holy is the Lord our God. O Lord our God, you answered them. A forgiving God you were to them, though requiting their misdeeds. Holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Teach me your paths, my God, and guide me in your truth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. 
Amen. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ephraim, St. Ephraim, deacon and doctor of the church. Uh, St. Ephraim was born of a Christian family at Nisbus around 306, very early saint, 300. He exercised the office of deacon in his native city and at Edessa, where he also laid the foundations of a school of theology. He took up the ascetic life, but did not cease to preach and write and to write books in refutation of contemporary errors. He died in 373. That's St. Ephraim, deacon and doctor. Quite often in the early churches, very early churches, uh, particularly the deacons were the, uh, the treasurers. They held the money for the rest of the community. That was one of their jobs. But we have a really good overview here with what St. Ephraim did in terms of duties of a deacon. So oftentimes we, we see the deacon as somebody who serves, serving at mass, assisting the priest, which is one of the things we do. But that's only a very small part of the other duties that deacons have had over the millennia. So that's that story. So we hear about salt today. We hear about salt. And going back and forth because it's kind of funny because we hear Paul talking a little bit about it and then Jesus, you know, at any rate. How can we reconcile, that's, that's the issue today, is how do we reconcile Paul's message and Jesus' message? Now, somebody would say, well, whoever compiled the Bible should not have put these two readings together because they seem to be contradictory. Well, quite different than that. They're not contradictory, but how do we, how do we put them together? How do we understand them? Well, Jesus is very clear that he has not come to abolish the law. He charges his followers to obey every commandment in the Torah, the Jewish scriptures. And there are, by the way, 613 of them. In stark contrast, Paul says that those same laws bring death. What can he mean? He might mean that he, we could work ourselves to death trying to follow all 600. Imagine trying to remember all 613 laws, let alone follow every, all those laws. It would be, become kind of crazy after a while, wouldn't it? You know, I, I mean, what can Paul mean by that? Well, he might mean that we, again, could work ourselves to death trying to follow 613 of these laws, but that's not his big point. He's got a bigger thing that he's talking about here. His message becomes clear once we understand that he's speaking of degree, not difference. Again, Paul is speaking about degree, not difference. For Paul, both law and spirit are good. What he calls the ministry of death, the Ten Commandments written in stone, and all the interpretations that followed is still good. In fact, it's so glorious that Moses' face shone with its reflected glory. Remember that story? He comes down from the mountain and he has to cover his face. The rest of the time he keeps his face covered because the glow of Moses' face, having received the Ten Commandments, is so people can't look on it. It's so bright. It's so brilliant. But, Okay, we've got these 613 laws that come out of it. And when you hear 613, we have the Ten Commandments, and then we have the interpretations of those by the, the uh, Jewish um, scholars. And what does that mean? What does it mean to not kill? What does it mean to not commit adultery? What does it mean to not steal? What does it mean to not bear false witness? And, of course, we have that issue today in, in, in our modern 
politics. <laughs> you know, what, what, what's a lie? What's truth? We, we go through all of these things as well as interpreting what something is. We have whole court systems that, you know, thou shalt not kill. Does that mean not in self-defense? You know, is there a justifiable homicide? And we too get into this whole system in our world today. Is it little wonder that the early Jews did as well? In fact, um, the Ten Commandments are still so glorious that Jesus, or as I mentioned, Moses' face shone with that reflected glory. But what Jesus brings to the party through his death and resurrection and the sending of the Holy Spirit is greater still. So don't look as one substituting for the other, looking as one on top of the other. In essence, the law was focused on those things that you should not do. And think about it, thou shall not. Aside from thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, even until the close of the age, that one is. But how many of those are thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness. So much of that was how we should not act. And that's what the essence of the, of the law was about the should, should nots, the should nots. And how we should, what, what is that going to do? That's going to help us avoid condemnation. What Jesus brings, however, is what Paul calls a ministry of righteousness. It's focused on those things that you should do in order to bring life. It's not about avoiding sin. It's about doing the right things instead. Since life is so much more glorious than condemnation, Jesus' gift of the Holy Spirit is indeed more glorious how to live a better life, not how to avoid living a bad life. Jesus, as I said, is indeed more glorious. Through the Spirit, as Paul proclaims, we can truly teach the grace of the law rather than its condemnation. And my brothers and sisters, that's what we get from Jesus. The Jewish laws are a matter of avoiding condemnation. But through the grace of Christ, through the grace of this law, we're taught to truly receive the grace of the law rather than to avoid the condemnation of breaking it. Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for young people who are preparing for marriage with the support of the Christian community. May they grow in love, with generosity, faithfulness, and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions. For we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a very nice Wednesday. God bless you. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Thursday. We're on our way downhill toward the weekend. Amen. God bless. See you tomorrow.